Hi, welcome to Crafting with Kristen. Today we're gonna to be doing a cool project that I used to do with my mom when I was younger. We're gonna be making some crafty things out of light bulbs. So we're gonna be painting on some old light bulbs. The stuff that me and my mom used to paint on it together were things like uh, penguins and little reindeer and snowmen, but we're gonna be giving it a twist. So I'm going to have the supplies in the description below and let's get crafting. We're going to start by mixing up a neutral kind of fleshy brown tan color. You can buy this color pre-bought with some craft paint, but I like to mix my own colors. You can get this color by pretty much mixing any two neutrals. So I pretty much mixed white paint to lighten it up and then I did orange paint with a little bit of blue paint. You're gonna to wanna to base coat the entire light bulb in this. So you'll have to paint it one side at a time and it'll take several coats to get it nice and, um, nice and opaque. Now I'm gonna take some black paint and I'm gonna start outlining. So basically I'm gonna start with Vic's, uh, I don't know if we wanna call them like bolted on sunglasses, but it's basically kind of a round, almost hexagon shape, but it comes up to a upside down U where his nose is going to go. And then I'm kind of marking off sort of a, a half circle where his forehead's going to be. And the nose shape is almost like a little upside down heart. Visualizing things in shapes is really going to help you build things up. So getting a good foundation in that area is a great start. Now I'm mixing a little bit of white and yellow to get a lighter color and I'm painting down the highlight of his forehead. And now I'm just starting to blend it with the brown that I already had mixed up. I have this thing called a Stay Wet palette and it's really great for when you have to blend a lot of colors because it keeps your paint dry for several hours. Or days. Pretty much until mold starts growing. Now I'm taking that darker brown and I'm blending in all the dark areas that I've marked with the black. And I'm just trying to blend it with some of those lighter colors that I've mixed up. Getting a nice transition and a gradient from the dark brown to the lighter yellowish brown that we mixed up is gonna really give you a good foundation for when you start adding all the line work and the highlights. And just remember, look how awkward mine looks right now. So don't beat yourself up if yours looks weird right now. It's gonna look better the more that you work at it. I'm also doing two little outlines outside the circle in the middle of his forehead. And I'm bringing a lot of that lighter color onto the nose area and the bottom jaw. I'll let that dry a moment. Also helps to have a reference photo handy. Now I'm taking some of the black paint and I'm gonna start blocking in that, uh, I guess we'll call it a bolted on metal visor. I'm also blocking in that heart shape for the nose, or upside down heart shape for the nose. I'm adding in a little bit of gray, like a nice dark charcoal gray. And now I'm taking some of those shapes that I've laid down on the top of the skull that little kind of half circle shape and blending that in. I'm also doing the same with the bottom jaw and the top jaw. His mouth shape is almost kind of the shape of lips when you're first starting to make it. It's just, they're going to be very, they're gonna be about the width of his sunglass visor thingy. Now I'm taking some more of that lighter tan yellow color and I'm bringing back some of these highlights and I'm just kind of blending them in while the paint's still wet. I'm using a small angled brush for this. This is really good for making big blended strokes, but still having some good control over it.
and bringing in a lot of highlights on those lines on the top of his forehead and little circles on the top for where the light would be hitting it. And I'm also using that lighter color along the ridge of the nose and his cheekbone. Now I'm starting to take the black paint and I'm outlining around all those dark areas that I marked up. Blocking in the nose with black and then I'm outlining the visor with a lot of the black paint. I'm also switching up where I'm doing the black and the gray. Right along where the ridge of the nose is, you're gonna have a highlight there. So have that be a lighter gray and then right next to it, you're gonna wanna put a nice dark black. I'm gonna put a little highlight along the top of the left eye visor. I'm building up those highlights on the cheekbones, bringing it back onto the top of the forehead, and those little lines along the forehead. And then now I'm blocking in the teeth. I'm pretty much just doing these long little tubular shapes, um, kind of like drawing little tic tacs where his teeth would be. Now I'm putting little tiny circles using a liner brush for the dots uh, where the rivets are holding this piece onto his forehead. And I gave a little extra white highlight right along where the bridge of his nose would be if he actually had skin on his face. So there's a metal right there. And then I'm adding a few little strokes of white, just outlining the top piece of the visor as if the light was hitting there. This is gonna give it a lot of depth and make it really pop and feel cool. Now I'm taking my black paint and I'm gonna outline all those little, little rivets along his visor piece. So reinforcing the outlines around the visor. Now I'm using the same technique to outline his nose and his jawbone. And then I'm doing little lines above his teeth. That's gonna make it really look concave. And then I'm drawing kind of an M shape along the top and the bottom, just outlining those teeth. And then bringing a straight line down in between those. About at the halfway point, we're gonna draw a line going vertically across. It kind of helps if you don't just drag it and do a straight line, but you actually outline each individual two. Kind of doing that same little tic-tac M shape along there. And then now I'm outlining the bottom jaw. I'm just tracing that kind of squared shape that we have along the bottom. And then I'm blacking out all the surrounding area. Now I'm drawing a nice bold outline along all the little ridges we've done along his forehead. And now I'm taking some nice crisp white and just dotting a few little areas with my liner brush just to really make it pop. Now I'm just gonna blend the back of the head. I'm gonna block in some black along where the back of the neck is. And then I'm just gonna do a circle of the lighter color. You don't have to sweat too much having this area be perfect because it's not really gonna get seen very much. It just makes it feel finished. Now I'm taking some chain and I'm gonna cut it to two even lengths. Using some jewelry pliers. Now I'm gonna put a dab of hot glue along the side of the head and I'm going to lay down the piece of chain. Try not to touch your Touch the hot glue, it'll burn. And then once that dries, then you're ready to glue the other side. Try to put it at the exact same spot on the opposite side. You can mark it with like a watercolor pencil if you want, or a little dot of paint that's not gonna be noticeable. Now we're gonna let that dry a minute, and now we're ready to glue on the little piece of thread to hang it. So we're gonna cut a little piece, put a dab of hot glue on his, on the very top of the head, and then we're gonna twist around in a circular motion, and then we're just gonna put the very end piece down and let it dry. Now we're gonna take a little piece of ribbon, and we're gonna glue it along the bottom. And 
we're gonna take a little red bow that I have somewhere in my bag. There we go. And we're gonna glue it to the base. And that's our finished product. Thanks for crafting with me. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe.